This is Teachable Moments with April podcast. I am your host, April. If you're a returning listener, I appreciate you and welcome back. If you're a new listener, welcome and thank you. To everyone listening, remember, Teachable Moments are all around us. Enjoy. This is Savage Sunday Evenings. I want to open up this particular episode with a prayer for discernment. Let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, I seek your counsel. I invoke your spirit and help me to discern as nothing escapes your sight. Guide me, Lord, and give me a healthy spirit, a clear eye and wisdom, and help me identify any presence of the enemy trying to tempt or trap me into the sin of pride or vanity. Set me free of my flesh so that I may see with the eyes of Christ and let me identify the Spirit behind any choices I must make. May your Holy Spirit fill me and take control so that I only need to walk in obedience. For you alone are holy. You are my sovereign Lord, and all my decisions must glorify you and your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. In his sweet name and holy name, amen. Today we're going to explore um, some uh, sources online about the question, where does the devil live or where do the demons live? And one particular um, online source, um, how they address um, or answer this particular question is as follows. The Bible's answer. As a spirit creature, the devil lives in an invisible realm. However, this is not in a fiery hell where he makes the wicked suffer as is depicted in artwork accompanying this particular article. And they show a classic picture um, that, you know, they don't really say who is the um who is the artist of this particular um, artwork, but it looks like very popular, a very popular painting. It says, The War in Heaven. For a time, Satan the devil moved about in the spirit realm at will, including entering directly before God alongside the faithful angels, found at an account in Job 1.6. But the Bible foretold that there would be a war in heaven that would result in Satan's being expelled from heaven and cast out into the earth, which is found at Revelations 12, verses 7 and 9. Both Bible, chronology, and world events confirm that this war in heaven has already taken place. The devil is now confined to the vicinity of the earth. Does this mean that the devil lives in a specific place on our planet? For example, the ancient city of Pergamum was said to be where the throne of Satan is and where Satan is dwelling, found in Revelations 2, 13. Actually, these expressions likely refer to the concentration of satanic worship in that city. The Bible says that the devil rules over all the kingdoms of the inhabited earth, so he does not dwell in any one physical location on earth, but is confined to the vicinity of the earth. Found at Luke 4, verses 5 and 6. So then I move on to another source um, on here, which is uh, the Blue Letter Bible, uh, dot org, with the same question, more or less. Um, written by Don Stewart. Where does Satan presently live? Because this is the common question. There are those who believe that Satan is presently bound in the pit. The Bible does say that he will be there someday. Okay. The Bible does say that he will be okay. And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years and cast him into the abyss and shut it and sealed it over him that he would uh, deceive the nations no more until the thousand years should be finished. After this, he must be loosened. For a little time. Revelations 20 verses 1 through 3. Now some Bible students think that this binding of Satan happened sometime in the past. Now the next question 
Is he imprisoned in hell? A common belief is to think that Satan and his angels are presently imprisoned in hell. However, the Bible does not teach this at all. Then the next has access to God. Satan presently has access to God. And then he gives a reference to Job 1 6. Now it came to pass on the day when the sons of man, nope, sons of God, came to present themselves before the Lord, that Satan also came among them. This access does not seem to be anything abnormal. The next point lives in the heavenly realm. The abode of Satan is in the heavenly realm. Then make reference to the scripture that I've um, referenced before, Ephesians 6, 12. For our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, active upon the earth. Scripture says that Satan is also very active upon the earth. We look at Job 1, 7. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? And Satan answered the Lord from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. We are warned that he now roams the earth found at 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. So from all of the above, we find that Satan is not presently restricted to one place because he can't do all that if he's in one place even though he is a spiritual being okay so cast out of God's presence at his fall the great fall and the casting out okay the fact that Satan will eventually be thrown down to the earth brings up a question the casting of Satan out of heaven that is recorded in the book of Revelation can mean one of two things. Either Satan will be thrown out of God's presence only at this particular point in history, which is still future, hmm, or that he had previously been thrown out of God's presence but still had access to the stellar heavens. Some feel that he was cast out of God's presence the moment he sinned and not, not only has temporary access to the Lord. Others feel that he was not banished from God's presence when he sinned but rather will be only at this point that the book of Revelation records Revelations 12 and then his summary Don Stewart says that Satan presently dwells in the heavenly realm the Bible teaches that he does have access that he does have access to the Lord whether he has already been thrown out of heaven or whether this judgment is still future is an area in which Bible students disagree so the third online um, source that we're going to look at at least for today the third one and the last one is from wisdom online okay wisdom online from wisdom international ministries and it's still the same question where does satan live it was published april 26 of this year by stephen davy now it actually looks like it is a blog and a transcript okay so i'm gonna read it's pretty short so okay ellery asked I was taught recently that Satan lives in heaven. Do you know where his address is? Hmm, that's interesting. Ellery, thank you for your intriguing question about where Satan lives. Although it may not be entirely accurate to say that Satan resides in heaven, it is essential to understand that he does have access to it. The Bible provides several insights into Satan's movements and activities, revealing that he operates in both the earthly and the heavenly realms. Now, the next question, what does the Bible say about where Satan lives? That's most important, right? What the Bible says. In the book of Job, we see Satan standing before God and accusing Job of various wrongs at Job 1. This account demonstrates that Satan has access to the heavenly realm, where he presents his accusations. Furthermore, Revelations 12.10 describes Satan as the accuser of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before God day and night until he is eventually cast out. Despite his access to heaven, it would be incorrect to identify heaven as Satan's dwelling place. The Bible portrays Satan as actively roaming the earth, seeking to tempt and destroy. 
1 Peter 5, 8 cautions believers to be somber and sober-minded and be very, very watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. This verse emphasizes Satan's predatory nature and his continuous pursuit of individuals to lead them astray. Moreover, Jesus referred to Satan as the ruler of this world in John 14, 30, signifying his significant influence and his significant and dominion over the earth. Similarly, in Ephesians 2, 2, Paul labels Satan as the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. Both of these descriptions underscore Satan's authority and presence in the earthly realm. Now, it is crucial to recognize that only God possesses the attribute of omnipresence, or omnipresence, meaning being present everywhere simultaneously. In contrast, Satan can only be in one location at a time. Consequently, it is more fitting to perceive Satan as a wanderer, a prowler, or roamer, rather than someone with a fixed residency. His activities span both the earth and the heavens, continually moving and attempting to wreak havoc on believers and humanity as a whole. Now, what does the Bible say about Satan's activities? The Bible teaches that Satan is a powerful being who is constantly trying to deceive and destroy people. He is the father of lies, John 8, 44, and the accuser of the brethren, Revelation 12, 10. Satan's primary goal is to turn people away from God. He does this by tempting them with sin, doubt, and fear. Fear. He also tries to discourage them from following God's will. Now, how can we resist Satan? The Bible teaches that we can resist Satan by relying on the power of God. We can do this by staying in God's word. The Bible is our primary source of information about Satan and his schemes. By reading the Bible and meditating on his truths, we can be better equipped to resist his attacks. Pray for protection. We can ask God to protect us from Satan's temptations and attacks. And God is always willing to answer our prayers for help. Flee from temptation. When we are tempted to sin, we should immediately flee from the temptation. We should not allow others and ourselves to dwell on the temptation or to give in to it. And lastly, trust in God's sovereignty. We can trust that God is in control. Yes, he is. And even when we are facing temptation or persecution, God will never allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear. Even though we feel like we are being pushed to the limit, it's, yeah, no, he's got us. He got us. I know that for a fact. He got us. That's it. Conclusion. Satan is, a, is real and a very powerful being who is constantly trying to deceive and destroy people. Don't underestimate him. Okay. However, we can resist his attacks by relying on the living word and the power of God. We can do this by staying in God's word. Remember, praying for protection, fleeing from temptation, and trusting in God's all-encompassing sovereignty. Understanding Satan's operations and movements equips believers with the knowledge they need, full armor of God, to remain vigilant and resist his schemes and magnitions. Although Satan may have access to heaven and a powerful presence on earth, we must never forget that God's power and his love are far greater. Provide us with the strength to overcome, or overcomers now, uh, of our spiritual adversary. Then they suggest here um, that this individual who wrote this, Stephen, um, ha- has a teaching series called Angels, Demons, and Other Flying Creatures. Wink, wink. If you would like to explore this topic in more de- in detail, then they say that you can listen to a seven-part series on www.wisdomonline.org by Wisdom International Ministries. So I clicked on um, clicked on this particular link that they're talking about: um, angels, demons, and other flying creatures. Um, and you can listen to it, you can download it, and you can also read the transcripts. It's up to you what you would like to do with that. And I think that I probably, um, knowing myself, I'll probably um, listen to it or read the transcripts, and then I'll probably um, discuss it here. And in the probably.
probably in the most uh, recent uh, <laughs> future, if that makes sense, I'll definitely be um, reading some of its content and, and critiquing it and talking about it here because I am intrigued by it. It says, let me just give you, so it's seven lessons. Okay, it says Angel Lesson 1, Angel Mania, Angel Lesson 2, Legends, Fables, and Biblical Origins. Angel Lesson 3, Guardians and Gallant Warriors. Um, then you have Angel Lesson 4, The Fallen Cherub. Um, Angel Lesson 5, Unmasking the Serpent. And Angel Lesson 6, What to Wear. <laughs> That's kind of funny. What to Wear to War. And the last one, because it's 7. Um, Angel Lesson 7, Dressed Up to Kneel Down. So that's interesting. Then they give, um, for some of them, some scriptures um, also to go along with it. And then they have other content here that looks rather good. I've never come across this particular one um, by Wisdom International Ministries. Um, but I think it looks like it would be definitely something that you, if you haven't already um, looked into it or are aware of it, to check it out. Abeka Academy, our accredited option, brings experienced teachers right to you. With our pre-recorded video lessons taught by teachers with decades of professional experience, your child will feel as if they're in a classroom with other students. With Abeka Academy accredited video homeschool, all you have to do is give your child the materials and monitor the lessons using our daily guide. We do the rest like validating grading, sending report cards, and providing free standardized testing. Homeschooling doesn't mean your child misses out on life's big moments. Your child can even celebrate their achievement by walking in the Abeka Academy's in-person high school graduation ceremony. Enroll in Abeka Academy today and give your child a private school education in the comfort of their own home. So at the last minute, I decided since I um, found, again, my aid to Bible understanding, I'm going to read um, the reference um, book here uh, underneath Satan. Okay, and it says, His Abyssing and Final Destruction. At the time of Satan's act in causing Eve and then Adam to rebel against God, God said to the serpent, actually speaking to Satan, since a mere beast could not understand the issues involved, Dust is what you will eat all the days of your life, and I shall put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He will bruise you in the head, and you will bruise him in the heel. Genesis 3, uh, 14 and 15. Here God made it known that Satan cast out, uh, Satan, that, uh, sorry, uh, Satan cast outside God's holy organization would have no life-sustaining hope, but would eat dust as it were until he died. Hmm. The seed eventually was to bruise him in the head, which would uh, signify a death wound. Um, when Christ was on earth, the demons identified him as the one who was to hurl them into the abyss and eventually into the torment of everlasting destruction of the lake of fire. Luke 8, um, verses 30 and 31. Now, in the book of Revelation, we find um, uh, described the last days of Satan and his actual end. At the time of Christ taking kingdom power, power not powder, uh, power, uh, Revelation reports Satan is hurled down out of heaven to the earth, no longer having access to the heavens, as he did in the days of Job and for centuries thereafter. We find this account at Revelation 12, verses 7 through 12. From this defeat, Satan has only a short period of time during which he makes war with the remaining ones of the woman's seed who observe the commandments of God and have the work of bearing witness to Jesus. In his efforts to devour the remaining ones of the woman's seed, I guess that's us, he is called the dragon inasmuch as he is a swallower or crusher. Revelations 12, 16 and 17 compared to Jeremiah 51, 34, <clears throat> where Jeremiah speaks of, 
for Jerusalem and Judea, saying, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, has swallowed me down like a big snake. In the earlier description of his fight against the woman and his efforts to devour her man-child, he is pictured as a great fiery colored dragon. Revelations 12:3. Now, Revelation's 20th uh, <clears throat> sorry, chapter describes Satan's binding and abyssing for a thousand years at the hands of a great angel, doubtlessly Jesus Christ, who has the key of the abyss and who is the seed to bruise Satan's head. Oh, gotcha. Okay, <clears throat> compared at Revelation 1.18. Now, Satan's final effort uh, culminates in permanent defeat. The prophecy said that he is to be let loose for a little while as soon as Christ thousand year reign is ended and that he will lead rebellious persons in another attack upon God's sovereignty but he is hurled along with his demons into the lake of fire and sulfur everlasting destruction and then they make reference to Revelation 20 verses 1 and 3 um, 7 and uh, through 10 and then they also um, compare Matthew 25 41 and then they make a reference to look up the lake of fire just listening to Teachable Moments with April Podcasts. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I invite you to connect with us on our social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest. I also encourage you to become a paid subscriber in order to gain access to subscriber-only exclusive episodes and content. As always, be well and stay blessed. Until next time.